As folks might notice, the agenda looks a little different, and we are back in committee room one. Um, one of those is by request of multiple members. I think it's still something under discussion that uh, the feedback that I've gotten is that people feel like it's a little easier to have a conversation in here, um, and I've heard that from both staff and, and colleagues on this committee, so at least for the time being, we're going to stay in here. It is our largest committee room that we do frequently have um, multiple staff members and, and occasional guests present. Uh, there is a chair report, a staff report, and recognition of guests on the agenda now as well. Um, you know, we are. I feel like when we took office, we have not always taken advantage of some of the work that is possible to be done in committee. I think sometimes it is important to get updates that are not just specifically agenda-driven, so I wanted to create some space for that. A couple of examples today. One is this segment right now, kind of under the chair's report, recognizing some highlights. But, you know, we get these reports from staff that come to council members since we are now, uh, thanks to a sequence of vice mayors, uh, a little more transparent in here and having video uh, of this available to the viewing public. Um, I think sometimes it's nice to look at the highlights and sometimes even some of the challenges that we face uh, on an infrastructure basis. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Courtney in just a minute. And then on the recognition of guest front, again, we sometimes do need to turn our attention to input we are receiving from the public. We do now have a public comment period uh, on the main floor, but I think this, for instance, would be a space to discuss. Uh, some of you might have seen uh, Walk Bank Nashville just released a report on possible crossings that looked at uh, 2014 to 2018 crash data and intersections that remain very difficult for pedestrians to safely cross throughout the county. I think this is a good opportunity to spend just a few minutes talking about those. So I appreciate everyone's uh, willingness to consider a few uh, updates to how the Public Works Committee agenda will work. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to Courtney to review just a few highlights from the, uh, the Public Works report that she sends out. Is this my moment to shine? It is. Yeah. Right. I mean, it could be your moment to fail as well. Okay. <laughs> oh. 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 It's really what you make is a tough town. It's harsh up in here. Okay. All right. Um, so I do send out that weekly report, and I just want to start off by saying that's a work in progress always. So if there's something on it that... Um, you would, if there's something on it that you think doesn't need to be included or that we should include, just reply to that email and let me know. Um, replying to that email is really probably the easiest way to get a question answered quickly. Um, we, the Metro Beautification and Environment Commission is partnering with Route Nashville, the Cumberland River Compact, and the Nashville Tree Task Force um, for a farm to your yard tree sale, um, and that is going on through November 18th. It's a really good price for really high quality trees. Um, some examples are October Glory Maple, um, Yoshino Cherry Tree, Sweet Bay Magnolia. So these are really beautiful stately trees. Um, and it's part of our initiative to try to grow the canopy here in Nashville and expand the canopy. So there is more information about that on both the Public Works website, the Cumberland River Compact website, all of the Route Nashville social media, um, and in that weekly email that I send out to you all. And Courtney, aren't they? They're almost six foot trees, yeah. so they're very sizable. They're very, yeah, you very also very can pay $50 yeah. to have them planted. Yes. They'll be delivered to your yard on December 1st. Yeah. yeah. And then, all colleagues, you have that information, that brochure, on your desk um, this evening. You got so, this. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll deliver it to the spot in your yard you want it, which is right. really huge because those trees are heavy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ha having planted some at this last little grant thing, those, those are heavy they're trees. They're trees, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of litter, we have this week we picked up, or I should say last week we picked up 6.8 tons over 36.1 miles. Just and think about that. I mean, that is litter. That right? is litter, that yeah. Is almost seven tons of litter. That is trash. Um, and then this year, 421 tons over about 1,900 miles. We filled uh, 637 potholes last week, and this year we have filled 37,277 potholes, which is also a kind of astonishing number. Um, this is not something that I usually include in the report, but during the month of October, um, our permits office issued 3,959 permits. That is a lot of permits. <laughs> um, Mark did the, the math to break it down, but I can't remember what you yes. came up with. <coughs> One every three minutes. Oh, my goodness. You put that way. Yeah. No, no, no time off for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> More dinner. Um, and then an update. One of the big paving projects that we've had going on is Riverside Drive from the Shelby Park entrance all the way up to Gulf Street. 
And that project was a result of some work that was being done, um, some sewer work that was being done by water. We went in and repaved, but a notable thing about that project, other than the size of it, is the fact that we shifted bike lanes from the outside of the street to the inside of the median. Um, Riverside has that long median kind of that boulevards the pretty much the entire duration. And um, so we have moved those bike lanes and we will be watching those over the next couple of months to see how people respond. But the feedback so far has been, it is a much higher quality experience for the cyclist and it is a pretty um, minor change for people using driving on the road. So we're pretty excited about that. And that's something that we might look at implementing on other streets where we have the opportunity to do that. Courtney, can I ask just real quickly, what is the transition point though? I mean, like, are you moving from outside to inside? And I think how there are, you, are like, effectuating those? I think there are two or three transitions where you are moving. Those are, we protect them at the intersection. So they're protected transitions at the main intersections with, I think, um, Porter, Greenwood, kind of the big, the big streets that you intersect with there. That concludes my report. Well, thank you. And then I, I have worked with Courtney and, and Director Sturdivant, um, and we've got a couple things coming up that we might do yeah. a special uh, called meeting of the Public Works Committee for. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. So we are looking at revamping our traffic calming program. Um, it's, it's not a huge change, but it would be changing from kind of an open application process to a two times a year um, more limited application window so that we have the ability to compare <coughs> the applications against one another rather than just always accepting them on a rolling basis. And that's going to allow us to use the resources that we get a little bit more effectively. Um, so I would like to, and, and the Public Works Department would like to um, sit down with you guys and kind of go through Traffic Calming 101, talk to you about the new process, talk to you about all of the tools that are in the toolbox for Traffic Calming, because there might be some things that you're not even familiar with at this point. Um, and then also go over some information about the hub. Um, we've had a lot of success with the hub lately, and a lot of those requests direct uh, are directed to Public Works. We're dealing with, I think, 75 or 80%? Yeah, right about 80% of all the uh, calls are related to public works. So just go over all of that and, and touch base and make sure that you guys are up to speed on what we're doing. Great. Thank you, Courtney. Um, we don't have, this is just kind of setting up this new agenda for the first time, so just wanted to be brief with it. We've got a pretty good um, agenda here. I'm going to go through this uh, by caption. If you'd like something taken off the consent agenda, as we've done in multiple other committees at this point, I think we'll try to approve a package as consent, and then if anybody wants to pull anything, I will make a note as we go through and read the captions. So we'll start with resolutions. Um, resolution RS 2018-1471. Sponsors written in Connell Allen, approves an application for a curbside recycling grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metro Public Works Department to fund the purchase of curbside recycling trucks. Resolution RS 2018-1472, Rotten O'Connell Allen approves an application for recycling education and outreach grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metro Public Works Department to focus on getting the word out to hard to reach residents through a broader public relations campaign regarding every other week recycling and to fight contamination using tools that the Recycling Partnership has developed. Resolution RS 2018-1473 uh, approves an amendment to an agreement between the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County and the City of Belmede with respect to the performance of municipal functions. RS 2018-1474 approves an amendment to an agreement between the Metro Government and the City of Forest Hills with respect to the performance of municipal functions. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off consent because I think it is worth just a moment of this um, and maybe we can adopt these couple as a package here. Resolution. RS 2018-1475 approves an amendment to an agreement between the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County and the City of Oak Hill with respect to the performance of municipal functions. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and take resolutions. Could I get a motion to approve motions, uh, resolutions on the consent agenda? Second. Uh, all right, got a motion and a second. So we'll take uh, RS 2018-1471, 1472, and 1473. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then I guess I might ask, uh, Director Sturman, do you want to address this, or is there someone better equipped to do so? Tom, here. Is this the this is satellite the cities. satellite cities? Yeah. Do you have a specific question? I think just 
an understanding of what, why this is coming before council in this way, just a, a brief explanation, because I know, but I don't know if everybody at the table. Um, several years ago, Metro entered into separate agreements with the, each of the small cities having to do with the distribution of some um, revenue and also who was responsible for what, including responsibility for right-of-way maintenance. And they have some several of those <coughs> requested an additional change recently. And this, this clarifies who's responsible for what and who gets the money. Okay, great. Um, does anybody have questions about this? I know we actually just did 1473, but I think these. Uh, are, yes, quick sir. question. Um, so it's Oak Hill, Forest Hills, and Bellevue. 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 I'm sorry. Let's say Bellevue. Bellevue. Um, Goodlettsville. Were they always receiving a larger amount? Are they technically about a thing? They, they have a separate agreement with us okay. as well. They haven't requested an amendment. I would expect that they that they may. Okay, I was just curious if there was a different amount for them or if they are just not being included in this. They haven't, they haven't talked to us about it. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure they will at some point. That's a good question. Okay. Right. They don't receive as much hall tax money, like but very minimal compared to the other three cities. But I guess my question is that's kind of They're aware of this. hall tax aside. If we're increasing the amount that we should have been paying to these three cities, are we not increasing what we should be paying to Goodlesville, or have we been paying more to Goodlesville? I guess that's my question is. I think everybody on this specific issue has probably been treated the same, in the same way. It's just these three cities are more, have more of their uh, revenue dependent on the hall tax, and this is more of a matter of urgency for them. Got it. So, yeah, and that's I think that's a key piece here is that when the Approve Act uh, passed the General Assembly last session, uh, it set up a repeal of the whole tax, which our satellite cities were using for some of these municipal functions. So, so uh, Kevin, all these these three cities are 100% all residential within their boundary. So as far as their revenue source, when the whole tax, as it steps away, as you see this kind of step in, then they, they don't have that. Yeah, and I understand that yeah. portion of it. It was just the, I didn't know how they set up with Gillettsville as well, the portion of the roads up there. So I'm just curious. Yeah. All right, uh, any other questions about this before we consider action? All right, I've got RS-2018-1474 and RS-2018-1475 and heard. We already did 1473. I'd accept a motion to do these two also. Second. Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Um, all right, we need that. Our resolution square away. We'll go through bills on second reading. Uh, Bill 2018-1377 approves the right-of-way relocation agreement from Malloy Street to CBR 217 Second Avenue, LLC, and CBR Ragland Parking Lot, LLC, and conditionally abandoning a portion of Malloy Street located between Second Avenue South and Third Avenue South. Bill 2018-1380 <coughs> authorizes SWDP Nashville Hotel, LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 1000 Broadway. Bill 2018-1381 authorizes LC Germantown LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground improvements in the right-of-way located at 1226 2nd Avenue North. Bill 2018-1382 authorizes Fountains Germantown Holdings LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 1401 3rd Avenue North. And then Bill 2018-1383 uh, authorizes Pizzuti Nashville Hotel Owner LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right of way located at 401 Korean Veteran Boulevard. Uh, is any, do any need to be pulled from consent? Seeing no uh, request for pulling from consent, I would accept the motion to accept all uh, all bills on second reading for recommendation. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> It passes, and we are, we have no other business unless Councilmember Roden. Did you have anything you'd like to bring to the attention of this committee? No, I just thank you for coming to Budget and Finance yesterday. You were a good man. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have done so, and I, I'm always glad to see you as a member of this committee. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone. You know, I know. Yeah.